Hello and welcome to the PC Security Channel. Today we'll be talking about what is possibly the best firewall for Windows. I get asked a lot, Leo, what do you recommend as a firewall for Windows? And here's my answer. First of all, if you can get a hardware firewall that's outside of your operating system, that's probably ideal. If you just want to download some software and you want to run it, this is what I'd recommend. It's called Komodo Firewall. It's been around for a while and there's not much like it. And I'll tell you why. Not only is this a full featured firewall with the ability to block network intrusions, man in the middle attacks. It also comes with Varscope, website filtering, a file rating system, and most importantly, HIPS or host intrusion prevention system. That means it can provide you with active protection against malware. And it's just a great complementary tool, even if you're using a different anti-malware product to just have on your system as that second layer of defense. But hey, this is the PC Security Channel. We don't just give you our opinion and ask you to take our word for it. We're going to put it to a test against some real world ransomware and see how it holds up. Before that, I'm gonna walk you through the interface very quickly. So this is what it generally looks like. Uh, if we go back to the basic view, you can obviously turn on the advanced view if you wanna see those sweet stats. Also worth noting that Komodo Firewall comes with the ability to auto contain or sandbox any applications that you run. See, it's got so many tools, I even forget to mention some. It's also got very detailed settings. And if you've never really used an application like this before, you will be spoiled for choice, really. Even if we go into the specifics of something like HIPS, we have a lot of settings. We can actually change the rules manually, yes. We can also change the rule sets and protected objects. What's the catch? Well, the catch is it's not necessarily the most easy to use and it does come with a lot of alerts. So you will typically get more alerts than you do with traditional security solutions. Now, if you are a computer science enthusiast and you like getting all the information on your system, you might actually appreciate the additional information that this provides. But this is not really the ideal solution to install on someone's computer who doesn't know what they're doing. Now, as promised, we're going to test run some ransomware on this VM and see how it holds up to actual ransomware attack. So we're gonna start off with Wasted Locker. This is a very recent ransomware sample, the one that hit Garmin. And we're just gonna change it to EXC. Go ahead and run. And as you can see, it immediately pops up with an alert saying this application is trying to access the comm interface. You may not know what this is, so maybe you say allow. And that is absolutely fine. Because now it's gonna try to access something else. Now you can try to investigate what exactly is winsat.exe. It's the system assessment tool, and you might think, well, why is this doing that? But anyway, let's allow it. And now we get a red alert saying that this is trying to execute UX bin. What the hell is this? And at this point, you might get suspicious. And good news is, no harm done. All you have to do is click on the down arrow and click on block, terminate, and reverse. Boom. The ransomware's gone. All of your files are safe. Nothing has been touched. It didn't even get to the point where it got access to the files. But maybe that's just a one-off, so let's try a different sample. So now we're gonna get something even more recent. So we're gonna grab Hello Kitty, the ransomware that infiltrated Cyberpunk's company, CD Projekt Red. We're gonna go ahead and try and execute it on the system. Once again, we get a hips alert, says the application is trying to execute conhost.exe. Say we go ahead and allow this. Now it tries to access COM interface. Say we allow again. Now it's trying to modify a protected file or directory. At this point, we're gonna say block terminate and reverse. And once again, the ransomware has been defeated. And that is really the power of Komodo Firewall. If you go ahead and open it, everything's fine. If we click on unrecognized files, we can go ahead and see the same um, two threats that execute it. We can also look these up online if we like, submit them. In terms of the firewall itself, you can watch all of the connections that are being made by your system if you want to. There's a short list over here. If we click on inbound connections, we can see all of them that are being made, the protocol, the source, destination, the amount of data sent. You can even change the mode. So there are different modes, custom rule sets, training modes. If you want to avoid the alerts early on so it learns the applications on your system, you can even go to block all if you want to just shut off network traffic. Same thing for HIPS. Uh, you actually have other modes, like you can set it to training mode for the first few days of using it. That way it learns the activities of your usual applications. 
then you can go back to safe mode. Paranoid mode is one I wouldn't really recommend since safe mode has plenty of alerts as it is. But hey, you may be wondering, this is all about the intrusion detection system. What about the firewall? We didn't test the firewall. And we're gonna do that with one of our legends, Shade Ransomware, and see if it blocks that CNC communication. But before that, here's a quick sponsor segment. This video is brought to you by NordVPN one of the leading VPN providers worldwide. If you'd like to take a deeper look at the product, we actually made a full video about it, especially from a security perspective, not just looking at the UI and stuff, but actually going in depth and looking at the network traffic and packets in Wireshark. They did have a security incident, which we covered, but since then they have been audited independently. They have really good mobile apps that connect almost instantly. They also keep their servers updated so you can access content from every region in the world. And depending on what you do, a VPN may be a necessity. I always use a VPN because I can't afford to have malware track me while I'm testing. Similarly, if I'm traveling and connecting to unknown Wi-Fi networks, it just gives me that additional peace of mind knowing that all of my traffic is being encrypted by a separate application. So go ahead, show them some love for sponsoring this video. Go to nordvpn.com tpsc for some of the best prices and check them out. Now back to the video. So as promised, we're going to test shade on the system and see how the firewall component stacks up. Now, of course, the intrusion prevention system will likely interfere, but we're just going to allow those alerts. So shade has started executing. And the first thing we see, interestingly, is the request to modify a file. It seems it's just itself. So we'll go ahead and allow this. Now it's trying to execute command prompt. That's fine. And now we've got a firewall alert. So shade.exe is trying to connect to the internet, gives you the connection, what protocol it is. In this case, it's TCP, and also gives you the port. And again, over here, you can allow the request or you can block it, but you can also block, terminate, and reverse. And this is not an option you're going to see with a lot of firewalls. And also, given that this application comes with a lot of alerts, it does give you the options to deal with them. So, for example, if this was a safe application, you could click on Treat As, and you could select one of these pre-installed profiles. But in this case, we know that this is a malicious entity. We can check the application itself and then go ahead and block this. We'll just block only for now. Now, over here, as you can see, it's trying to modify a protected registry key. From the entry, current version run, it seems like it's trying to make a startup item. So I'm going to go ahead and block. Now it's trying to target explore.exe, that's fine. Now after several minutes, we're going to go ahead and check our documents and pictures, and it looks like they're all fine. So here's an active example of a firewall doing its job preventing the CNC communication and stopping the ransomware in its tracks doing that. Another advantage of using a third-party firewall like this is that it can't be easily manipulated by malware. Say you just use Windows Firewall. A typical Trojan will have a command line instruction to disable it or to add a rule to allow itself there. But I don't think a malware is going to have the smarts to be able to play around with Komodo Firewall in the same way. Now, I didn't want this video to be just about Komodo since it's not a product review. It's just my thoughts on how to set up a good firewall. So I'm going to include another recommendation here. So this is Sophos XG Firewall Home Edition. This is also free and you can set this up at the router level. So it's completely outside of your OS. In order to do this, you will need to have a custom router that can be flashed and you can install other software on. You can probably find a pretty good one for about 100 bucks on Amazon. And once you get it, you can just flash the OS and install this firewall on there. This does come with additional features to stop malware as well, so that's a plus. So if you can set things up at a network level, you can go ahead and try this for free. So there you have it. That's how you can get a great firewall today. Of course, this is not an exhaustive list. So if you've got some fancy firewall setup that I didn't mention in this video, please don't hate in the comments. If your strategy is fundamentally sound, it's totally fine to use other similar solutions. Please like and share the video if you enjoyed it. This is a question I get asked very often, so I'm sure a lot of people would love to know the answer. And by the way, if you're going with the network firewall route, you can do that with any operating system. So you can use Mac, Linux, doesn't matter as long as you're connecting to the same network. 
Don't forget to subscribe to the PC Security channel. We have a lot of awesome cybersecurity content coming up. We just hit 150,000 subscribers, so thank you so much for that. This is Leo, and as always, stay informed, stay secure.